often describe myself as the weird child in my family who drew. And when I was in high school, my parents decided that they wanted to build a house in my father's village um, so that it could be a place that we could all go to. And since I was the kid who drew, um, they gave me a plan book and said, you know, um, pick a plan, here's roughly what we need, draw it out, we'll send it to Nigeria um, for them to build. So I actually went into college thinking I wanted to be an engineer. It sort of became a happy accident that I wound up at Wellesley, which is a liberal arts school and doesn't have engineering, but um, they have a partnership with MIT. Um, that's when I sort of tapped back into um, that love of drawing and other types of making and even remembering when I, I, I made those plans for my, um, that house in my father's village. And so, and that there are things that I will face as an African-American female both within the field of architecture, but also just that in general, that will color the way that I look at the world. So everything you're hearing me say or that I do on projects comes out of that background and experience. I don't remember how it ended up, but the next thing I knew I was coming to public architecture to you know, work on these really impactful projects that I felt delivered on a social mission even more than I had been able to do with the framework in the corporate setting. And the way that I like, I'm really committed to social justice and rectifying imbalances and power because I see what I've had to do to get to where I'm at. And I don't think that that should be the case for everybody. I've got several projects on my plate right now, um, whether it's um, you know the redevelopment of a low income housing project in Charlottesville, Virginia, to um, you know figuring out the the future of a old power plant site in Baby Hunters Point, and they're all kind of ground zero, if you will, for rapidly changing communities. And in both of those projects, I'm doing a lot of work with the residents who live in that area and a lot of things that I had been thinking about lately. So, um, you know, the overarching theme was about pain, grief, and, and healing and how we need to think about it in the context of developing space, um, particularly uh, as we think about things like gentrification and, and displacement and other stuff that is rapidly transforming cities. So spatial justice is a it's it's a term that's been a while uh, around for a while, but I don't think has been widely circulated. It was coined by um, two geographers, Edward Soja and David Harvey, and it basically means that we understand that justice has a geography and that the equitable distribution of resources, access, and services is a basic human right. And so, and so spatial justice means that we start to look at these projects and think about it as a way of how do we bring equity into these communities. For me, that often, you know, most of my projects take place in the context of um, low-income uh, or underserved communities. And uh, these communities are, are ones that have often been isolated through patterns of urban development, like urban renewal, um, where you often see the least access to services like public transportation or you know, food deserts. And I think that oftentimes when we think about cities, a lot of times people don't feel that there is a mechanism to me rectify wrongs. They know that those mm -hmm. wrongs exist, they can see it, they drive past it, they drive past the homeless encampments, etc. But they don't believe that there is any mechanism to actually rectify that. You know, we talk about spatial justice in the context of of cities, but there's also a system of justice that just needs to be applied within the design profession to make uh -huh. it available to more people. Just think about like my own journey of like, well, how do I process pain? How do I grieve? It really started to crystallize in me that there are things that we're not talking about. Even though we're talking about physical space, we are actually talking about people. If we talk about people, then we have to talk about the full landscape of emotion. It's not, life is not just about joy. Um, there's this other stuff too, and us not talking about the other stuff doesn't, um, it, it doesn't make it go away. Like, what does healing look like? And how do we weave in acts of healing into the creative process? Like, I, I really think that that's the next, uh, next mountain we need to climb in terms of talking about design. So uh, each day I feel lucky that I have an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm.